Hello everyone, welcome back to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we will be seeing introduction to no SQL at a glance. This video is going to be very important because the term no SQL plays a very important role when it comes to big data analytics. So let's start with an overview of no SQL. So it is non-relational database, which means it doesn't have any feature which are related to relational databases. Unlike in relational database, this non-relational database does not have a predefined schema, which means the structure of the table will, will not be predefined. The total number of attributes, the meaning of the entire database will not be the same at every point of time. Now if you remember in one of the previous videos when we were discussing the different types of big data, then in that video I have shown you how data is stored when it comes to structured database. We use tables which contains columns as well as rows to store the data. But this is not the case for NoSQL. Inside NoSQL, we do not use tables for storing the data. Now you might be wondering that how the data is stored then. Don't worry, we will be discussing this in the next videos. We will be seeing the different ways through which we can store the unstructured data. Now the point is why this NoSQL doesn't support tables because it stores the big data as well as real time data. Now as we have already discussed in the previous videos, big data doesn't include only structured format. It may include data which can be of unstructured format. The data can be of different types. For example, it can be image, audio, video, etc. So for storing that, we cannot use the traditional structured format. Instead, we can use this NoSQL. Now it can also be used to store real-time streaming data. That means the data that is recorded live. So this recording of live data was not handled by the structured format, which was the traditional format. So that is why NoSQL was introduced. Next, it follows CAP theorem. Now, this is a very important theorem, which means consistency, availability and partitioning. NoSQL cannot follow all these three properties at a time. It has to follow any two of them. Since this is a very important topic, we will be seeing this entire term of CAP theorem in the next video. And we will also discuss the reason why it only follows any two of the properties among these three properties with interesting and fruitful examples. So that was the overview of NoSQL. I hope you have got an idea how the NoSQL databases works as well as why and where we use it. If you guys get any doubt regarding this, then you can straight away put it in the comment section. So now let's move on to another topic regarding this NoSQL, which is the business drivers of the NoSQL, which means why there was a need for the companies and organizations to shift from the traditional format of storing the data to this NoSQL unstructured data storage. So the first business driver is the volume. Next comes the velocity. Next business driver is the variability and the last business driver is the agility. So let's start discussing all of them one by one starting with volume. So what volume means? Volume is nothing but large amount. So as we have already discussed in the previous videos that the data is getting generated exponentially, which is increasing the volume. With this increasing data, there is a need for extending the storage capacity. So because of this volume, there is a need to scale up. Now, not only for the storage purpose, there is a need for scaling up the processing speed as well as the resources. Now, if the data is large in amount, requirements of processing it will be more as well as the resources that will be used for fulfilling these requirements will also be more. Now even if we increase the resources because of RDBMS, it would take more amount of time to process this huge data. So organizations shifted from the serial processing to parallel processing. That means the entire data will be divided into clusters and every cluster will be processed parallelly. And finally, the output from all of these clusters will be combined. Hence, volume is one of the business drivers. Now, the next business driver is velocity. So, it means the rate at which the data was getting generated. Initially, the rate at which the data was getting generated was very low. Hence, there was very low traffic generation. 
the number of requests for accessing the data was very less hence there was no traffic at all but with this increasing velocity of the data generation there was a random burst in the web traffic to handle this random burst it was becoming difficult for a single source rdbms for responding to all these requests in a given amount of time hence it resulted in slow response time now to deal with this particular problem of slow response time there was a need for huge amount of resources which was quite expensive for the organizations and company next business driver is the variability variability itself says variety as we know that data is not always in a single format the data can be in various dimensions for example audio in one dimension video and images of two dimensions and so on so there was huge diversity in the data types now if you think of a traditional structured database adding this diverse data types to predefined schema may change the meaning of the data or it may also change the entire shape of the data so traditional rdbms was not able to tackle these things also because of this there was a compromise on the term availability that means the data was not getting available at all the time also it was a compromise on money and time hence variability is again an important business driver for the no sql to come into picture now let's move on to the last business driver which is agility now let's say you have good resources to store the data as well as to process the data but if the time taken by the database to retrieve or feed the data is very much high then in that case it's not an optimal database rdbms databases contains many relations of every single attribute and sometimes the total number of nest as well as the relation among different attributes may get so complex that it becomes very difficult for rdbms to retrieve even small amount of data which decreases the response time and ultimately it will not have all the features that a good database must have so because the traditional rdbms was finding it difficult to have all these four important features the companies and organizations shifted to no sql because it supports the controlling of the big data as well as the real time streaming data also no sql has all the properties to tackle different problems that were created by these four business drivers so i hope you have understood this particular concepts and also you might have got an overview of the entire no sql concept in the upcoming videos we will be seeing different architecture patterns of no sql as well as the cap theorem stay tuned for that and for more such videos do like share and subscribe to my channel also hit the bell icon and don't forget to follow me on instagram thank you so much for watching